Welcome to this Tobacco University video. Here we're investigating hemp-based cannabis for fiber and also grain production. So looking more on a little bit of a large or industrial scale here, hemp production. So first off, when we're looking at producing it for grain and, fi and fiber here, that can be highly mechanized, because we are looking at a large scale here with the labor demands per acre similar to that of other ag agronomic crops, uh, except for weed control and harvest operations, which require relatively more time for hemp. So again, we can mechanize harvest, it can be a large area, make sure you're having this equipment so you can be able to process those large volumes of plant material. Now we're looking at seed sources. Uh, hemp used for fiber or biofuel or other products grown about six to seven feet in height. So it's gonna be a very tall crop. The goal is to produce long fibers for industrial processing. There are some uh, varieties listed here that have some validation based on some data for Nebraska uh, conditions is the best information that I could find here. So again, if you're looking at your particular region, you might wanna try to see if there's been any research done on particular varieties for your particular climate or lo growing location. Now these hemp varieties, just in general, uh, should be certified as having less than 0.3% THC, so they're below that federal limit. Grain production tend to favor early maturing varieties. If you're looking more for fiber production, you want to tend to favor later maturing varieties to allow for an increased cellulose concentration in yield as the season progresses. Male plants do die off during the season, and monoecious female varieties are generally preferred for industrial hemp production. So again, keep that in mind when you're looking at planting or purchasing uh, seed. Now planting for grain and fire production, the whole planting process in general for grain, Grain production may be optimized with no more than 150,000 plants per acre and sowing 20 to 30 pounds um, of seed uh, per acre to kind of get to that uh, number. Now for fiber production, this is data based on Europe, but fiber yields were not increased by having more than 182,000 plants per acre, and this plant density results in better quality fiber than with higher planting densities. That's a prime example there where more plants aren't better per acre. You want to try to maximize your production within that growing area. Now keep in mind that soil temperature should be around 55 degrees Fahrenheit in emergence uh, is likely to be three to five days after spring planting. Now it should be about that 55, it's you know, warmer than that, it'd probably be a little bit better. If it's cooler than that, that may stunt or reduce the rate of germination that you notice with your seeds. Now harvesting for that grain in fiber, you know, how do you go about that harvesting process there? For grain, as with many uh, any grain crop, really the proper harvesting, processing, transport, and storage are critical to prevent spoilage and also ensure the highest value for the harvested grain. A grain drying facility is needed and grain drying should be begin within an hour and a half of harvest. So it's always good to have or make sure you have the full process uh, for said crop before you go through and plant it. Drying can be done at 140 degrees Fahrenheit with a continuous flow dryer, but grain temperatures should not exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit to avoid the chance of toasting uh, your crop there. Now for fiber harvesting, hemp is usually grown in windrow, windrow and cut for fiber production at about eight inches between early bloom and seed set uh, when the lower leaves of the female plant begin to yellow and baled at 12% moisture content. So this is where kind of have an idea and knowing your crop and checking the fields uh, to try to hit that kind of peak time uh, to harvest if you're looking at fiber. Now the market for uh, grain and fiber, just in general, again, it's always a little hard to kind of gauge your particular market, but it appears, at least using 2019 as an example, the supply greatly exceeded the demand and hemp fiber and grain stock, um, uh, sorry, feed st grain for feedstock prices plunged during the 2019 season, with specific regions getting hit harder than others. So processors offer growers a profit share agreement on the product once sold in place of outright purchasing a feedstock at an agreed price. So this, again, this is always a little bit of a kind of a challenge with any sort of perishable crop or crop in general, looking at uh, demand versus supply. And if supply really kind of becomes very high, demand might go down. So always good to kind of have an idea what the realistic price will be, what it was in previous years and any sort of data you can, you can gain so you can make an educated decision. But it is a kind of variable market. So it's not a guaranteed sale there. And a lot of this can come with agreements growers may establish 
established ahead of time. So again, just keep that in mind that with, again, any crop, you got to keep an idea of the market so you can make sure that it is profitable to use in your growing area.